we have seen the working capital requirements at the various stages that is starting from advance payment stage then raw material stage then semi finished uh, good stage then finish, uh, finished good stage the four stages we have seen and we have seen that we have quantified what is the working capital requirement for the particular unit during these stages now the uh, last stage comes to the receivable stage yes it is already finished material has been finished means material has been prepared manufactured now it is so it is going to be sold and the receivable stage we were assumption our assumption is that that unit is required to give 45 days credit the 45 days the money is blocked and what is our capital requirement at that, uh, for at the receivable stage so the receivable stage we have seen that what is the cost it comes to 1800 we have already as, uh, assumption we have we have worked out earlier 1800 comes that is after loading uh, the profit and everything it comes to 1800 the 1800 you calculate uh, 12 months it, it divided by 12 and take the 3 by 2 that is 1.5 months holding there so it, it worked out to 225 lakhs okay so we have seen in the five stages advanced raw material uh, semi finished finished and receivable stage then what is the total of the uh, working capital requirement at each le each level each stage is the total working capital requirement that how much it comes that is 50 plus 54.16 that is a raw material stage 50 is the advanced payment stage then semi finished good stage 41.67 then finished good stage 86.67 and receivable stage it is 225 that comes to how much the total if you take 50 plus 54.16 plus 41.67 plus 86.67 plus 225 it comes to 457.50 lakhs the so 457.50 lakhs is the total working capital requirement of the unit under this operational uh, cycle method we, we have assessed okay now here one more assumption is there yes we can bank cannot give 100% uh, working capital bank insists that it should the promoters contribution should be to the minimum 25% of this one so having worked out the total requirement that is at 457.50 lakhs the total working capital and if the borrowers or the margin is to be deducted that margin that comes to 25 lakhs 25 percentage and 25 percent of 457.50 lakhs comes to 117.50 lakhs that is approximately then balance amount that is 75 percent can only be financed by the bank and bank finance would be to the extent of 340 lakhs so under this method we have worked out the requirement of the unit at 340 lakhs as against total requirement of 457 lakhs okay now coming to uh, next this is one of the methods of assessment of this one okay then we will talk uh, discuss on turnover turnover method another method a very popular method is uh, for a so far as working capital assessment is concerned the turnover method you, you must perhaps remember that in the uh, NIA committee has recommended the NIA committee has recommended that for SSI unit it is in 1992 that SSI unit the total working capital should be uh, should be commuted as total working capital requirement is to be taken as the 25 percent of the gross turnover of which 20 percent should be by way of the bank credit and 5% towards this uh, promoter's contribution. This is a modification of this scheme uh, for the method only, but this method under this turnover method, this is not uh, 50 lakhs, there NAI committee has come with the uh, SSI units uh, enjoying working capital up to 50 lakhs only. Here it is uh, this turnover method is applicable for units up to uh, 5 crores so far as SME unit is concerned and for all other units it, it will be up to an inclusive of 5 crores this turnover method can be uh, made applicable now let us think about what let us discuss what is actually the turnover method under this turnover method as i told you it is a, a really an improvement of the uh, NI committee recommendations uh, that is also, that is turn, based on the turnover the working capital was uh, proposed to be assessed okay here under this turnover method the working capital requirement of a unit 
is computed at 25 percent of the gross turnover. It is gross turnover of which four fifth or 20 percent, 25 percent or it's got 20, 25 percent of this one, then 20 percent of the gross turnover is to be taken as the working capital requirement and 5 percent by way of the promoter's contribution or we call it as net to working capital NWC. Here the assumption as I told you it is applicable up to 5, 5 crores so far as SME is concerned and uh, up to an inclusive of 5 crores for all other unit. Okay? So, and here this uh, one special feature or peculiar feature of this one is that here the assessment is based primarily on the assumption that the operating cycle that is why we I explained that operating cycle uh, twice means two three times we have touched that operating cycle. The operating cycle is of three months with, the, with an assumption that if the operating cycle is three months this uh, formula can be applied. And in case in many units it may not be uh, correct also, it may exceed 3 months, it may be less than 3 months. If the operating cycle is beyond 3 months, in that case additional working capital can be made based on the, uh, based on is the contribution. The contribution should also be increased proportionately. And if the operating cycle is lower than 3 months, then in that case yes bank can consider a working capital to the extent of 25 percent of the uh, to the extent of 20 percent of the gross turnover and drawer should be permitted with the draw means drawing power available that is the net of margin this is what the uh, system says and let us now look at a uh, another illustration now this uh, let us have a look on this illustration see the total turnover the projected turnover of the unit is estimated or projected at rupees 300 lakhs okay and under the turnover method what we discussed the requirement of the working capital is to be taken as 25 percent of the total or gross turnover here the gross turnover is uh, shown as gross turnover is taken at 300 lakhs so, what is the working capital requirement, total working capital requirement? The 25 percent of the 300 comes to how much? It comes to 75 lakhs. Okay? That is the total working capital requirement of the unit. As we have explained, out of that 75, how much bank can finance under this turnover method? Here we have already discussed, out of the total working capital requirement of 25 percentage of the gross turnover, Banks can finance to the extent of 20 percent. 20 percent of what? 20 percent of the turnover, which comes to how much? That is, uh, 20 percent of the 300 comes to 60 lakhs. 60 lakhs would be the bank finance we can consider. Okay? And out of this, uh, again, the total requirement is 75 lakhs. And balance 75 lakhs, from where it has to come? 15 lakhs. That is by way of their contribution. How much it is the contribution? 5 percent or one fifth of the working capital requirement. That is 25 percent comes to 75 lakhs out of the 300 lakhs and bank finance to the maximum can be considered to the extent of 60 lakhs and provided their contribution should be 15 lakhs. So, making 60 plus 15 the total working capital requirement is met. That is known as the turnover method. This method as I, repeat, as I told you earlier also I repeat that so far as SME, um, micro, small and medium enterprises it can be considered uh, this method can be applied uh, to limit up to rupees 5 crores and beyond that uh, for other units it can be up to an inclusive of 5 crores. This is about the turnover method. Now another method is uh, that is first method. There are two, three methods are there, uh, it is accepted by the Reserve Bank of India. The first, second, third of course we will for academic purpose we will just touch it. Uh, first and second we will explain. Okay, the first, uh, what is the first method? We have seen earlier what is uh, the working capital requirement under operating cycle, working capital requirement under turnover method. Now coming to the third method that is first method of lending. Under this method. Uh, you remember we have 
uh, discussed, we have talked on working capital gap. That is, what is the working capital gap? You remember, that is current assets minus current liabilities other than bank borrowing. The bank borrowing requirement is, assessed in the, that is why that, uh, that principle, that the concept is everywhere used in the assessment of the working capital. So, the, in the first method, which is normally applicable in the case of uh, some certain new units or uh, units and uh, sick units or uh, units under rehabilitation or restructuring, this, uh, this uh, method is being applied. All other healthy units, this uh, uh, second method is being used. But for our purpose, we have to study what is first method. And under the first method, the working capital requirement or work, first of all, the working, we have to ascertain what is the working capital gap. And the working capital gap, that is current asset minus current liabilities, you will get the working capital gap and the unit is required to bring in to the minimum of 25% uh, of the working capital gap and balance amount can be financed by the bank. So, let us have a look on this. This is what in the first, in the, uh, first method of lending. Let us have a look on uh, first method. Then under the second method, we will have illustration also. We will um, uh, discuss that illustration so that you will get a fair idea about what is first method, what is second method. In the under the second method, yes, second method here, the what is the requirement of uh, the their margin? That is the base. Under the second method, the unit is required to bring in at least 25 percent of the total current assets. Earlier in the first method, the unit is required to bring in 25 percent of the working capital gap. Whereas in the second method, the unit is required to bring in 25 percent of the current asset and we will just touch the third method because the, that the method has not been accepted by RBI. So, under the third method a new concept has been suggested by uh, the committee where the core current asset because under this th third method the entire core current concept should be financed by the unit itself from their long term sources. Then what is core current asset? It is This is the the minimum level of raw material, stock in process, then consumables, which are in the pipeline for, for, the, for maintaining the continuity of the production. But those items, uh, it is very difficult to quantify and that might be perhaps one of the reasons why the method uh, was not uh, accepted by uh, the Reserve Bank of India. That entire core current asset should be financed by uh, the unit itself from their uh, long term sources and uh, balance current asset 25 percent should be brought in by the unit and thereby the working capital can be assessed. Can you have a look on it? See, assuming that these are um, the in all the cases under first method, second method and third method, you can look at uh, look at the slide. The total current asset is assumed at 370 lakhs, okay? Less here in the first method we have to work out working capital gap less working capital current liabilities other than bank borrowing it comes to 150 current liabilities other than bank borrowing so what is the working capital gap it comes 370 minus to uh, 250 it comes to 220 now what is the margin required here in the first method the unit is required to bring in 25 percent of the working capital gap yes the 25 percent how much it comes that is 55 so the MBBF or maximum permissible bank finance or permissible bank finance, uh, some banks it is called as permissible bank finance and otherwise as per the guidelines, the maximum permissible bank finance is limited to 165. So uh, we, for a current asset holding of 370 under the first method, the unit is eligible for 165 lakhs only. And take the second method. Second method, what is required? Here, the unit is required to bring in 25 percent of the current asset. Here, what is the current asset? 370. What is the 25 percent of 370? It comes to 92. So, first of all, current asset minus the current, um, the current asset minus the uh, margin required, that is 92. It comes to 278. <coughs> and 278, then what is the uh, uh, current liabilities other than bank borrowing? That is same, 150. So, he is eligible for uh, 128, that is <coughs> 370 minus 92 comes to 278 minus 150, that is the liabilities, it comes to 128. Here you see, 
in the first method first method the unit is eligible for 165 lakhs whereas in the second method is eligible for 128 only see uh, under the first method it is uh, the eligibility is limited to 165 lakhs and in the second method it can uh, the unit is eligible for 128 lakhs that is because first method 25% is the, of the working capital gap is required to be brought in that that is why is eligibility is more whereas in the second method he is required to bring in 25% of the current asset that comes uh, so that is why the requirement has gone down so 128 comes now let us for academic purpose what is third method as i told you under the third method the core current asset entire amount should be financed by the unit itself the core current asset i explained that is the the inventory items which are in the pipeline for for maintaining for the production schedule so that it is very difficult to assess that you will quantify that one so that you are not accepted and but here our purpose we say that it is core current asset is quantified at 95 lakhs so 370 is the current total current asset less 95 lakhs that comes to core current asset so balance left is 275 out of the 275 again he is required to bring in 25% by way of margin that margin of 275 comes to uh, 69 lakhs so what is left out 206 206 is a requirement again current liabilities current liabilities come to 150 so 206 minus 150 that comes to um, that comes to 56 only see the difference in the first method it is 165 second method it is 128 and the third method it comes to 56 it is really choosing the unit so that uh, system that method has not been accepted so in this cases that is first and second what is the current ratio the current asset divided by current liabilities it comes to 1.17 in the case of in the first case the first method and in the second method it comes to 1.33 that is ideal 1.33 is to 1 this is required now another illustration let us see with the same this one the current asset holding of 370 okay uh, the first method and second method that is explained here in this see current asset what are the components given you see current asset 200 then to, uh, that is raw material 200 stock in process 200 uh, 20 uh, finished goods 90 receivables 50 other current asset 10 so total comes to 370 that is what we were uh, discussing now 370 is a total current so we keep it as it is then current liabilities we said that uh, bank uh, current liabilities 150 that is uh, here bank borrowing uh, uh, total 150 is the total current liabilities here you see credit purchases means under credit is it comes to 100 other credit is 50 so total current liabilities uh, 150 so 150 then bank borrowing yes bank borrowing is assuming at 200 lakhs so total liabilities come to 350 here 370 then 350 is a total current liabilities then uh, other uh, total asset comes to 370 then under first method what is a uh, eligibility and what is a eligibility under second method let us uh, look at it under first method we have seen that he has to bring in 25% of the margin that is uh, uh, total current asset 370 less current liabilities 150 so balance working capital gap is one, uh, 220 and 220 then it comes to uh, 55 lakhs is the margin so 220 minus um, 55 it goes to 165 when 165 is a total eligibility whereas is working capital you see or already enjoying 200 lakhs it indicates that the unit is drawing much more than its eligibility even though it is in the first method in, uh, there is an excess drawing to the extent of 35 lakhs that is 200 minus 165 to the extent of 35 lakhs whereas in the first method in the second method we have seen that 370 and it is worked out to how much 128 earlier okay 128 is a maximum permissible bank finance here So excess borrowing comes because bank borrowing is 200 lakhs. The excess borrowing comes to 72, whereas the ratio would be maintained. That is current ratio 1.33. In first case, 
that the excess borrowing comes to 35 lakhs. In the second case, it comes to 70, uh, 72 lakhs. Okay. Which this then the bank may insist that this amount should be whatever excess drawing they may penalize also some perhaps sometimes they may penalize otherwise they will give us some time say three months or five six months that within that they will have to bring in within we will have to draw down the outstanding uh, within the limit as per the uh, methods. This first method is as I told you it is exclusively used for the sick units weak units and uh, units under restructuring rehabilitation etc. Now coming to this is the first we said we have discussed on operating cycle method then first method then second method now uh, third method also we touched for the academic purpose 